shut up compressor. What's up everyone, Matt here with Dukes Models, and welcome to episode 9 of the P40F build. So when we left off in episode 8, I had just finished all of the upper camo, and I had done the unmasking of the insignias, and I discovered a little blemish on this guy, which, yeah, I went ahead and fixed. I also went ahead and masked and painted the filler caps a sort of dirty red, and now it is time to move into masking and painting the markings. Outside of the insignia, that is. So, I've got my masking sheet here pretty much ready to go. And I think we're going to start with the 11s on the fuselage sides. There we go. Got one down. Okay. Whew, that was stressful. All right, so all the fun shit has been masked off and we are ready to start painting. First, I'm going to start on the tail codes, for which I'm using a mix of RAF marking yellow and radome tan, which gives us a nice kind of pale muted yellow tone. Okay, next up is the nose script. And for this, I'm gonna be using, again, a mix of radome tan and marking yellow, but a lot more radome than the yellow and a little bit of middle stone added as well. I might need to add some white to that too. Shit. All right. A little bit of white to lighten it up because it looks like it might be way too close right now. Okay, next up, it's the fuselage numbers, the 11s. And for these, it is gonna be guns C369 Azure 
Again, I didn't go with this for the main underside because it was very violet, but I think it'll work nicely for these. cool looking color all masking jobs should be this straightforward all right one more color change Okay, so for the last element, which are the stripes that angle down off the side windows, I'm going to be using MRP 385 Willow Green at about two parts, and MRP SEA Camo Green at about one part. And basically the Camo Green just kind of chills out the Willow Green a little bit because, man, that is a vibrant, bright-ass color. So, let's go ahead and knock these out. And the first thing about these is different pictures show these things at different lengths. So it's really tough to get a good, accurate sense of what they were like. And honestly, I have a feeling that they weren't consistent across every aircraft. But the burner set that I have provides these as decals, and I don't see why. I think they're simple enough to spray. All right, time to peel shit. Green strip looks pretty cool. Lola up here is looking good. I need to get the centers out from the O and the A, but other than that, I'm happy with that. The things about masking with paper and tape is you can put it right on the vinyl. You don't really worry about that much lifting at all. Not that MRP is really a big lift risk. Cool, cool. I'm happy with those green stripes. And there we go. Okay, so we have the painting portion of the markings done. I still have to put the Indian head on the green stripe. I still have to put the little goose or whatever the fuck it is up here and maybe a few stencils. But other than that, that is the sprayed markings and they're looking pretty decent. Outstanding. Okay, so it is time to go ahead and put two whole decals down on this aircraft. But honestly, I'm a bit nervous because even though I've had great experiences with Berna decals in the past, I did a few tests on the Hellcat Mule, and oh my god, they are thick, and they don't conform to shit, and Solvacet kind of works. Other stuff just sort of bounces off. <sighs> but there's no hope of replicating this kind of detail with a mask. So we have to do what we have to do. Okay, so we've got the Indian head decal soaking. Seems to be a decal adhesive softener stuff.
So there we go. Nice thick ass decal. Okay, while we are waiting for the decals to get their shit together, let's go ahead and paint the propeller blades. Now, these have already been primed and then painted over with LP11. They're pretty much good to go. And on these Desert P40s, the props seem to be okay-ish on the front, but on the back, they are heavily abraded. Uh, some of the bare metal showing through kind of up towards the tip and things like that. And so I've got some plans to do that. And to paint these, I'm going to be using, instead of just a regular black, to me is XF85 rubber black, which is a sort of grayish, not quite black. So this is the forward facing face of the prop. So we're going to paint this more or less like normal. I am going to sneak up on it. Also, I'm not above using stencils on these things. Maybe, possibly if I can get it to sit nice. By the way, it is windy as shit tonight. Uh, so if you hear background noise of things blowing, that is what it is. Okay, so this one's looking pretty solid on this side, so now let's do the main event stuff. Once I get these backs painted up, I'm going to try something that should work. Okay. So now all that we're going to do is we're going to take this little bit, a little bit of sanding sponge. Basically the way that Desert sand abraded the propeller, we're just going to do the exact same thing to it. So there we go.
Awesome. I think that will work. All right, now it is time to apply the yellow prop tips. And for this, I'm using MRP 142 orange yellow. It's the standard go-to for prop tips, at least US aircraft. I've got a feeling I'm going to need to put something under that first. Okay, so I'm going to put some pale roundel red, MRP 231, underneath as a base. Pink makes a good yellow base. This stuff covers pretty decently. Now we are back to the orange yellow. That's better. There are our prop blades. Fantastic. Okay, so we're back checking in on these decals, which eh, <laughs> are not my favorite. Um, they're not terrible. I think it might just be because they're so fucking shiny. But they really need some help settling into the details. And I have found that of my various chemical agents, Solvacet seems to be the one that really gets through to them and makes them listen. So let's apply some of that. So the rule of solve set is apply it and leave it the hell alone for a while. So several years ago, I built a 148th Tamiya D520. And I bring it up because on that build, I used a sheet of Berna decals. And I came away rather impressed. They went down nicely. They settled in well. Everything went great. And ever since then, I've had a pretty positive impression of Berna decals just as a decal option in general. But with this P40F, I think that opinion is changing. So even though I only had two decals to put down on this thing, they have been a pain in my ass for the past several days running. I mean, it's literally just these two Indian heads on either side of the fuselage. And I put them down and I did all the typical stuff that I do with decals and they usually come out fine. And literally nothing is getting these things to snuggle in. I have tried everything from Microsol to Solvacet to Ammo's whatever decal solvent number two to X20A to extra thin cement to fucking lacquer thinner. Nothing. Like, they settle in a little bit, a tiny little bit along some of the lines. But these things are so thick that Obi-Wan could defeat Anakin from on top of them. I don't know what the hell is going on. I don't know why they seem to defy chemistry and everything bounces off of them. <sighs> Who knows? And I thought maybe, you know, it's just these. So I will try it out on my Hellcat mule. And after repeated applications of various setting solutions and various levels of aggressiveness, it's still, eh. Nothing, nothing amazing. The yellow ones, I did manage to get kind of snuggled in somewhat decently. But they're also, I think, a much thinner color than, like, the green. Because I fucked it up over here with lacquer thinner. You can see there's white underneath the green. And so I think there's just, there's something going on with, with the stacking of colors 
that make these decals extra thick that just keeps them from snuggling into everything they should. And just to make sure I wasn't crazy, I put two decals down on the bottom of the wings and these have been hit with Mr. Mark Softer, which if you have used Mr. Mark Softer, it's one of the more nuclear options out there. And these things just look like ass and they're not snuggling into any of the little access panels or things like that underneath here on the wing surface. So unfortunately, these Indian heads are too intricate to really do as masks. And so I need to figure out a way to move forward when nothing will get them to snuggle in. And I'm already resigned to the fact that I'm probably going to have to do some glossing and some sanding and some, you know, the typical stuff to work down shitty decals and blend them more into the surface. However, doing that is also going to require accepting that I'm not going to be able to get into some of this surface detail once I do that. So before I do anything, I need to go ahead and put some panel lining down so that I can move forward with some gloss. And the annoying thing about this is that I just know that this shit is not going to get in there the way that I want it to. Okay, so panel line wash is applied. We're gonna let it sit for a little bit, remove it, and then we're gonna try doing the fun shit of sealing these with a gloss, building it up a little bit, and sanding it back down to hopefully level out the surface. <sighs> Fucking decals. All right, so last night I applied a heavy coat of all clad aqua gloss and went back and added more with a brush to both of the shitty troubled decals. Now comes the moment of truth where I am going to try to sand the gloss down with some Tamiya sanding sponge. This is 1500 grit. And we've got our little dunking thing of water here so we can wet sand this. Go ahead and get a little bit on the surface too. And basically, we just come in here. And just go slow and gentle. When I've done this in the past, which isn't all that often, because I try to not use shitty decals, um, generally takes a couple of goes, which is really cramping my style for trying to finish this thing by the end of the year. Definitely helping, but we've got a ways to go. So I'm going to pause, do this so that I can listen to some podcasts or audiobooks at the same time, and we'll pick back up shortly. Okay, so I've been sanding down, and I think I'm getting to a place where I need to apply another coat. I'm definitely getting this flatter to the surface. It's no longer uh, it's no longer Obi Wan's high ground, but there's still a little tiny rise I can feel around the outside of it, and I'm starting to what feels like burn through to maybe some coats underneath. Same over here. So a bit more aqua gloss and we will be back. Okay, so after four separate rounds of all clad aqua gloss, two separate instances of sanding, and a final coat of Ammo's one-shot transparent primer, which is my beloved clear coat, I think we have finally gotten to a point where the decals are tolerable. They're not perfect, they're not as settled into the detail as I would like, but they are blended into the surface. Obi-Wan no longer has his high ground, 
and they don't look wildly out of place and terrible. So I will take that as a win. <laughs> I really, uh, really am not happy that two fucking decals managed to throw me off my game for a good week as I dealt with them. But here we are. And so now I think it's pretty much a good time to go ahead and call this episode done and wrap things up and pick back up in the next one with a start to the weathering process. So thanks for watching. Hope this was useful and I will catch you later.